Absolute Love, Infinite Light. September 2015. Now, beloved one, we are going to talk about a vast subject. We are going to talk about God. First of all, God is not an entity. It is not a he. It is not a she. It is not even an it. God is beyond description, yet the human mind wants to know and wants to define and redefine and change. That is good, because every time you change, you allow an expansion of the consciousness to take in more. You are God, an essence of God, right here, expressing. You are going to say, well, that must be a very tiny percentage of God. It depends on your self-image, does it not? I will say that you are all of God right here. You do not always activate it. You do not always tune into it, all of it, but you are God having an experience as a human. This is not the first experience you have ever had, because you keep adding to it, which is one of the most beautiful things about God. God cannot be contained, cannot be defined in any human terms, any human verbiage. It is beyond all of that, and yet you are the essence come once again to play, come once again to create, come once again to assume a definition, and yet in assuming a definition, you are already limiting God. I have spoken often that God is love, and have said to you that love is the closest thing in your experience to understanding the expansiveness of God. When you fall in love with someone, you forget small self. You want to know where they are, what they are doing, what they are thinking, and you cannot wait to meet up with them one more time and to ask, what have you done in this day? Who did you speak with? What are the ideas that you had today? You forget yourself, the small self, in love with another one. I have to use human words to explain God, but God cannot be known by the mind. It cannot be known by definition. It cannot be known by words. But words can be clues as to a feeling, the feeling of expansiveness, the feeling of allness, the feeling of being accepted without even having to think about being accepted. There is not a thought. In the love of God, there is not thought. It is an isness of feeling of being beyond anything that you know in human terms. But human love can give you a clue. Therefore, you have put together the molecules of our Holy Mother, the earth, the dust of the earth, to make a body. You have brought together energy in a form to express that love, to be able to speak, to hold, to gaze into another's eyes, and to lose yourself in another's eyes, being able to forget small self. This does not have to be just with another human person. It can be with a beloved pet. You look into their eyes. And you lose yourself momentarily or longer. You lose yourself in the love with them. And you think, even with the thought which is not a thought, I am one with this that I love. I am one with a person, or I am one with a pet. I am one in love with anyone and everyone. You come to a place, as your great masters have, where all they live in is love. They do not judge. It is love without judgment. It is love without mind. It is love without thought. It does not judge, because there is nothing to judge. Everything is, and everything is non-judged. It is love. You know, when you are in love with someone, you do not judge. You abide in the place of non-judgment of them, the same as you are hoping that they will not be judging you. For truly, if they are in love with you, they do not judge. There is not thought. There is only the feeling of allness, the feeling that, I have come home. Sometimes you find it with another person. Sometimes you find it even in a sentence in a book, where the lights go on, and you know that you are home in that moment. Or someone may say something to you, and all of a sudden you are accepted in that feeling, and you know that you are home. It is a most wonderful true place to be. For truly what you are searching for is to know the feeling of acceptance, the feeling of non-judgment, the feeling of love, where you know that you are perfect. Now, your world does not tell you that. Your world says that always you must be striving to make yourself better. From the time that you were the small infant, the parents have said to you that you are not quite perfect. You could be better. By several different means, they try to impress upon you that you could be better. 
Even if you come home from your schooling and you have brought the top marks, the parents, in their desire to make you better, will say, well, now, make sure you do this again next month. And so you say, but I thought I had already reached that place, and yes, you have. But it is the parents' way of wanting to see you perfect, and you are already perfect. It is the parents' misguided love, I will put it that way, where they feel they should be able to guide you, mold you, shape you according to their idea of perfection. But it must be left open-ended for you to live out your own perfection, which you may acknowledge later, unless you go into a repetition with the one that you are partners with who is then exampling for you what the parents were doing, and you might live that for a time, or maybe two or three times or more, until finally you have an incarnation where you know, you bring enough remembrance with you from the space of God, where you know that you are perfect already. You have met ones who seem to go bouncing along through life as the most wonderful beings, and you wonder, what secret do they know? They know their perfection. They know that they have come here perfect. But they are yet few in number, because your world is a very strong and harsh taskmaster. Your world is full of shoulds, as you know. My world 2000 years ago had shoulds in it as well. There were times when I needed to sit by flowing water and watch the water, which did not judge itself. It only exampled that which it is, the molecules of energy in the shape of water forever flowing. I understood from that that I was energy also, that I had made myself in a certain form and fashion, but truly I was the Father's work. I spoke to you of the loving Father which is beyond the human Father, because human fathers can sometimes miss the mark a little bit or quite a bit. So, I hope you understand that the Father that I speak of, Abba, is forever loving, because you are love itself incarnate, walking around, creating, experiencing. It behooves you, if you are love, and I assure you that you are, to be loving. To be loving to the other ones that you have interaction with, but even more than that, to be loving to self. If you do not love self, who is going to love you? When you take time for self in meditation and quiet, and you commune with the allness that you are, with the peace that you are, you are touching and living in and dwelling in the love of God, the allness of absolute love that knows no other, knows no judgment, knows no thought, knows only asness of peace, absolute love. Nothing else exists. The world is going to say, well, those are nice words, but what about the things that I have agreed that I will do? What about the decisions that I have to make? People are waiting for me to make a decision. I assure you that as you will spend a bit of time for yourself in peace and in quiet, the answers will come to you without having to run around in a frenzy, trying to decide what is right. You will know. There will be a quiet knowing that comes to you. Allow yourself to abide in peace, because that is your birthright. That is from whence you have come, and it is where you are going to go after you lay down the body and have no further use for the body. You are going to go to perfect peace. Now, I know you have stories. Your religious philosophical organizations and your authorities, who seem to know more, have given you many stories of what happens after you lay down the body. But, fortunately, some clues have come to you that suggest that you go to a light that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and you go to that light. That light is your own. That light is the light that you are, even while you are focusing upon a human incarnation. You are infinite light, and you have come from a place of light. You have come from a consciousness of knowing light. And in him there is no darkness. Now, I would change that quotation to say, in God, it is not a gender, there is no darkness there is only light. You are light right now as you are activating the body. Your scientists are proving that to you when you have the aura photographs taken, and you see the light around you. Where is that light coming from? It is coming from you. That is why it changes from time to time, depending on your emotions, energy in motion, and consciousness. You may have a photograph done one day, and you come back the next day and have the photograph taken and the light will be different. The next time you have opportunity to have the aura photographed, allow yourself to be very, very joyous, because when you are happy, 
like the little child who rejoices in life, at that point the aura stretches very large. You are infinite light. You have come from infinite light, and infinite light you will return to when you are finished with the capsule that you have made for yourself to walk around with. When you are finished with this reality, then you will return to the light, the light that you are. You have the most wonderful clues coming for you now, where you do not have to believe that you are going to spend a certain number of years in a place that is going to cleanse you of all of your sins, or in a place that is going to cleanse you by the burning. You know, I have always wondered about that, in that if you burn something, what does it turn into? Ash. And is that clean? You would most often say that ashes are a bit on the dirty side, a bit that you want to wash off. So I have always wondered about that one, how the fire is going to cleanse you. Okay, that is a rumor, that is a story. You have it on good authority that it is not true. That idea has been given to you to keep you in shape, in form, and to follow the ones who must know better than I do. What they tell me must be true. I'm not quite sure why, but I've been told that they know better than I do. And so your authorities, your pseudo-masters have given you all kinds of stories to keep you in line, to make you follow whatever they wanted you to follow, and, the bottom line, to give your golden coins to the preservation of that story. The golden coins always seem to be the bottom line, in this world anyway. There is nothing wrong with golden coins. However, if the ownership of golden coins has you owned, then that is where the problem would be. But there is nothing wrong with golden coins, even many golden coins. You have examples of ones who have many of the golden coins, and they do much good with allowing others to benefit from their giving and their vision of sharing. Some of the other ones, because of past lifetimes where they felt that they did not have enough of the golden coins, will try to keep them as long as they can. But then, as you have understood from your own lifetimes, the golden coins cannot bring you security, happiness, good health. It is a false belief and a false god to be worshipped. You have, for the most part, come to a balance of understanding golden coins. They are to be used to further the ideals of love and compassion, of oneness. Now, as you have seen, in order to define God, you have clues. But any definition you come up with is not the illness of God, for God cannot be defined or limited. God does not fit into a small package. God is this and more. So when we speak that God is love, that is a clue to the feeling of God, the feeling of expansiveness, the feeling of peace and the feeling of total acceptance. For God, if it were a person, would look upon you and see no fault. And God is more than that. It is, as I have said, absolute love that knows nothing different than love. And you, as the extension of God, come into an incarnation, you are the light, the energy of love. You have put God energy into manifest form of light energy, and you have taken a quality from the illness to demonstrate, to know for yourself that you are much more than just the little speck of dust that some of your religious philosophical leaders have said that you are, only a little speck of dust. You are much more than that. You contain within the consciousness, as you allow it to accept and to bring in the illness, you contain the illness of God, and yes, you can know it even while being in an incarnation. You have masters who have attained that consciousness, and in seeking the consciousness of allness, it does not mean that there is a denigration of incarnation. It does not mean that there is anything wrong with choosing an incarnation. In fact, your greatest masters have often chosen an incarnation which is most difficult and requires the most love. You can touch the space of love and allness. It will change your whole outlook on everything. It will afford you a wider vista of what human life is all about and what life with a capital L is. You are absolute love which has chosen one more time to bring itself into a smaller form. You are infinite light which has made manifest in the physical the allness of love and you are the light and the love of Christ. You do not always recognize it in yourself. You sometimes do recognize it in other ones. You can see it in other ones. And in order for you to see it in another one, you have to have a point of reference within yourself. Otherwise, you would not see it. 
You are the Christ. You are the illness of God come into this area of incarnation, bringing the illness into a space which can then relate to other ones, because you have said, I want to know all of my parts. So I say to you, look around. These are all of your parts, and even more. Go always as the Christ that you are. Christ did not live just 2,000 years ago. It was not only embodied in one Yeshua. It lives and moves even in this day and time, and it loves. Allow yourself to live in love. You are the absolute love, the infinite light of God. So be it. Yeshua ben Joseph, Jesus. Channeled through Judith Coates. www.oakbridge.org